All right, guys. So I just finished watching four hours of Justice League, and holy dooly, that was so much better. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go and do a great big review on this on the on the on the movie. Everybody has done it. Every man and his dog has done it. I'm just going to give you the 10, 15 minute sort of cliff notes, whether it's good, bad, whether it's worthwhile watching, whether it's worthwhile watching if you've seen Justice League, and just my general thoughts, and I, I touched on this yesterday, but the, the whole fact that HBO has released this when we've been told for years that it doesn't exist. So, what... Justice League. Um, what were my general thoughts? So I have seen the first one. It was a while ago. I did have to watch it twice because I fell asleep the first time watching the first one. And then I've just spent four hours watching the Justice League Snyder Cut. Um, the Snyder Cut is, you can tell it's a lot longer. You, you'll probably get through the halfway mark and you'll think, how much has this movie got left to go? You'll probably hit pause and find that you're about halfway through it. Um, it's not... It, it drags a little bit in spots, but to be honest, it is more than acceptable. You you probably will sit there after four hours and think that was an amazing movie and not really care too much about the fact that it's four hours long. Um, there's a lot of slow-mo in the movie. Yes, that is definitely true. It feels like every tenth shot is a slow-mo. But that is typical Zack Snyder. But there's definitely a lot of slow-mo in it. The, the character development is far. And I mean far superior than what Josh Whedon's was. If you've seen Josh Whedon's one and you liked it, you're going to love this. Because this basically goes through and just expands on that whole premise of this movie. Anybody that saw the first movie and paid to see that bastardization of that first movie should be furious that they did not get to see this. I, I disagree with a lot of reviewers when they say that it wouldn't have worked at a cinema. I think it would have if they had to put it in a mission halfway through. Definitely would have worked. Um, I really hope that going forward that they do actually go through and continue doing Snyder's version and scrap Josh Whedon's. Okay, it's it's a far superior movie, and obviously this part's going to be the spoiler-free part. We'll get into the spoilers in a section. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, this is a far superior version of what Josh Whedon did. Josh Whedon's was a, a real bastardization of it. There was minimal character development, um, there were certain people in this, in the Snyder version that show up that don't, don't show up in Josh Whedon's version or that I've even seen. Um, there's a few people that you're going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, they're in it. That's cool. Um, we'll talk about that in the spoiler section. But at the end of the day, yeah, this is, this is a far, far superior movie than Josh Whedon's version when it came out. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Josh. I love Firefly. You know, I grew up watching Buffy and Angel and all those sort of shows. Yeah, I watched him. Get over it. But at the end of the day, I like Josh Whedon. I don't like his political views, but I like his shows. Love Firefly. Love Serenity. Right? But at the end of the day, this is a very dark movie. And this could actually give actually give the, the 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 Avengers a run for their money. This would actually give Marvel a run for their money. Now, the question everybody needs to ask is why didn't they do that? Why was it that it took 170,000 people to sign a petition and years of begging and pleading to finally get this movie out? Years of lying, saying that it doesn't exist. And I'm, I'm just, look, if you, if you're, I've touched on this yesterday. I'm not going to touch on it again because I'm going to end up smashing something. But at the end of the day, watch my video from yesterday. Everybody should be furious that this is not the movie that we originally got. This is a far superior movie. The characters are better. 
There's no secret mustache that's been retouched up. The faces, there's no funniness going on with his beard or his mustache or anything like that. It is a perfect movie. I don't want to say perfect, but it is a far superior movie than, than what we've got with the previous Justice League. And I can see why they didn't want this one out. Because at the end of the day, this makes Josh Whedon's look bad. And for some reason, they have a problem with the Snyder Cut. Maybe it's Snyder, I don't know. But they have a problem with it. There's a couple of things in there that made me cringe. Wonder Woman, that you know, goes, um, it's like, oh, I can do anything, sort of, you know, that feminism sort of BS. There's like two lines in that that made me like cringe in a four hour movie, but you know, at the end of the day, it's two lines out of four hours, so who cares? Um, but yeah, like, it, it's just like the, the stuff with, with Cyborg, the stuff with Barry Allen has a bigger role, it has a better part. Superman, that whole character development with him coming back. Obviously, you've seen the first one, you'll see that. Um, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, that's not really a spoiler, though. We're starting to get into spoiler territory now. Um, but yeah, like the thing with Princess Diana, uh, you know, with Wonder Woman and, you know, Batman and everything like that. It is just, it's a more flushed out, flowing sort of Snyder cut. It is, it is a far better movie. If you have a choice... If you haven't seen Justice League, you're, you're lucky. And if you have a choice between Justice League and the Snyder Cut, forget Josh Whedon's. Just go and see the Snyder Cut. Sit down with your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, on a couch, on a Sunday night or a Thursday night or whatever. Get the popcorn and just watch it. It is a far better movie than anything Josh Whedon had put out. What Josh Whedon has put out was a bastardization of this movie. And, like I said, people should be furious that, that we were lied to for years about this not existing. But, regardless. Um, also, uh, so we're going to get into the spoilers now, guys. So, obviously, I'll give you the count of three to turn off. Um, but just before we do that, uh, rating out of ten, I would say probably 8.5, 9 out of ten. I'm reluctant to give anything a 10 out of 10. I think there's always room for improvements. I would say a solid 8, 8.5, maybe a 9. But yeah, definitely worthwhile and definitely will actually give Marvel a run for their money. So if you have a choice, if you haven't seen Justice League, or even if you have seen Justice League, watch, watch the Snyder Cut. It is amazing. It is far better than, than the Josh Whedon bastardization and everybody should go and see it. Now, let's get into the spoilers on 3, 2, 1. Okay, so the whole Superman... We'll start off light with light spoilers and work our way up. The whole Superman with the whole moustache, it's not in there. It is originally how Snyder wanted it. It is the moustache is there. Um, I can see why they, they did the moustache. They wanted to change his lines... So because they were trying to cut too much out, it didn't flow, it didn't make sense. So they had to go through and reshoot it. Um, like, for example, with Superman, the part where he comes back from the dead, he goes to the farm, you see that in the Justice League, Josh Whedon version. But in the, in the second one, in the Snyder Cut, for example, he's got no shirt on. She goes and gives him a flannelette shirt. I don't know if that's in the Josh Whedon version. It's not really important, but it's there, it's in there. Um, you know, his, his mum comes up to him in the farm and gives him a hug and, you know, and everything like that. And it's, it's, it's a lot more of a touching story. Now, also something that was not in the Josh Whedon version was the fact that Lois was going through and has resigned, or not resigned, but has failed to turn up to work. She's basically living a hermit life in her, in her apartment. And it's actually the Martian Manhunter who turns up and impersonates uh, his, uh, his mother. Um, I've gone blank on her name now, don't forgive me. But yeah, he impersonates uh, Martha, Martha Kemp. He impersonates her and basically as Martha, playing the part of Martha, tries to get Lois back into the life. Because like he says, you know, like he, he says to her, obviously as Martha, 
you know, at the end of the day, you, you have to live. You have to live your life. It's a very touching sort of story. And it goes to show that the Martian Manhunter is actually there. He is aware of what is going on. And he is secret and behind all the scenes, putting pieces together to make sure that things actually do happen. So he is very much in the background of this whole movie. There's also a scene at the end where he turns up to Bruce Wayne as well as the Martian Manhunter. Uh, Martian Manhunter. Um, so like I said, there's a few scenes with the Martian Manhunter. He doesn't have a big role. But he's definitely in this movie, and that was really, really good to see him. Um, Barry Allen has a bigger role in this. Um, he goes through and actually does some extra stuff when it goes to connecting uh, Cyborg to the mother box to separate them. Um, and you actually get to see the bad guy. You actually get to see this infinite bad guy or whatever, and it does, it leaves you on a cliffhanger. Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to say what it is or ruin it, but it's definitely, it's a cliffhanger. It's definitely set up for a two or three part series. And yeah, the things aren't necessarily resolved as much as they would be if it was just a single standalone movie. Um, apart from that, obviously, the, uh, the Atlanteans have a slightly bigger role. Arthur Curry goes to Atlantia, he gets the whole speech from the, the William Defoe character, I forgot his name, um, and he basically tries to encourage him to take ownership um, of the Atlanteans because his brother's doing such a bang-up job, um, you know, worrying, focusing on the, the planet and on the, on the people on the planet instead of worrying about the threats of the mother box and stuff like that. Um, the mother box is a little bit more explained as to what it is and why it's there that the three parts do. There's also this big thing with the with the um, uh, with the um, unliving energy or something they call it. I forget the name of it now. But yeah, basically it goes through and explains that a little bit as well, which was not in Josh Whedon's version. It's just it's a far superior movie, and. It, it, it really is frustrating that we just did not get this in the first place. But I get it. Snyder had a suicide in his family. I get it, right? But you're going to tell me that someone couldn't take over using his vision? Josh Whedon has to come in and wave his small dick around and try and make the thing he's instead of just finishing off Snyder's cut? But anyway, um... Like I say, it, it, it's just the characters are more flushed out. There's more dialogue. There's more scenes with Bruce and the team and uh, and, and, and stuff like that. It, it's just Wonder Woman has a bit more of a backstory. There's the whole lighting the torches and everything like that. I think that was in the first one, but pretty, pretty small cut down part. It, it's just, it's a far better movie. Now, obviously, yeah, because it goes for longer, right? Sure. But this is what Snyder wanted. This is what he wanted the, the show to be. This is what he wanted the movie to be originally. And instead we got Josh Whedon's bastardization of it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else there was. Uh, spoiler wise. Um, I'm not going to go into too much into spoilers because I, I want people to see it. But yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's a bit more Superman. and Oh, there's the, the whole 15 minutes at the end where it's... Um, it's like a, a, a warning about things to come in the future. Um, Joker turns up. Joker's in there. That's obviously really, really cool to see the Joker. Um, you also get to see Deathstroke, I think it is. is. He's in there twice. He's in two scenes at the end. The last 15 minutes is just basically it's an epilogue. It sets up the whole future. Um, so yeah, um, it's good to see, yeah, it's good to see the Joker, it's good to see Deathstroke is there, because it does reaffirm that they exist in this universe as well, um, even if it is just at the end. But, you know, like I say, it's just, there's more, there's like a connection with Cyborg and his dad, you, you get to see that better, it's just, it's just so much better than the Josh Whedon bastardization. And it's it's a shame. It's it's a pity that we didn't get this originally. Now, like I said, would it have worked? Yeah, at the cinemas? Yeah, put a two-hour block and then have an intermission. 
for 15, 20 minutes and then have another two hour block. It would have worked. But for some reason they have a problem with Snyder and they have a problem with fans and we're getting into WD or oh, 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 just Warner Brothers, WB, sorry, Warner Brothers hating their fans for some reason. But it's going to be another video for another day, probably tomorrow. Um, I, I want to touch on that. But look, at the end of the day, guys, if you if you do get a choice, definitely go and see it. Go and see the Snyder Cut. It is definitely a lot better. And and it definitely is worth the four hours. Um, take some popcorn, take a, take a few drinks, sit up on the couch and watch it with your significant other or your mates if you don't have one. And, and just enjoy yourself. It, it's definitely worthwhile. But guys, apart from that, let me know your thoughts are in that comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack that like button. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. Apart from that, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to talk about WB hating their audience, and not just them, but this whole anti-fan service that's going around. We're going to talk about that on the culture. And we'll probably also cover one or two news articles as well. Um, but guys, apart from that, have a great night, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in the next movie. Slider Cut, definitely go see it. It is definitely worthwhile. Have a great night, guys. Enjoy.